Hi, uh, this is Lani Bunny, and this wants to be a very easy to follow tutorial on how to add those brushes, how to change and what the settings are, and a little bit of an extra feature that I've added for this brush pack. I hope you enjoy it, and so let's start. So let's start with the most basic stuff that probably not a lot of you know, that is how to import uh, brushes that don't come from Clip Studio Asset. Now, this is very easy, or at least that's how I will do it. The first thing is going to select whatever tool, subtool you want, it doesn't matter, not an issue. Now you duplicate a subtool by just right clicking on whatever tool you want. This is the tool, the brush is not important. Just go duplicate, uh, duplicate subtool, give it uh, like download whatever you want, it's not an issue. And now you just need to click and drag here you will see a red line that say hey this brush will go here will go out of your of your brush list and it will create a new subtool group here we can see and we have our download brush now as you can see here we have now download now we have created a download subtool group now you have uh, two ways in doing this, that is uh, the classic uh, click and drag from a folder to this uh, new subtool group. So here's the most used way that I know if you're on a computer, you just select all the brushes and you just click and drag them here you wait a little bit because it will uploading the brush tips, the textures and so on. So it will take a while. So don't worry about it. Take a cup of coffee or tea. Just wait until it's finished. Okay, so I've just waited 30 seconds circa and that's it. Now all the brushes are imported. Okay, now the second method, uh, well, the first one, the click and drag, is something that there, there are a lot of tutorials online. But the second method is something is, that was implemented uh, uh, recently. You just click on the hamburger menu, if memory serves correct and this is the right name, and you go to import subtool. Okay, and you can select only one brush at a time. I can't select multiple brushes. So I will need to do the same thing for 44, 44 times. And it's really, really tiresome. Okay, so if you can, just uh, uh, use the click and drag method because it's just easier. Okay, okay, uh, I know this seems like uh, I'm doing a lot of introduction, but one of my beta tester said that uh, she didn't know exactly how uh, the option uh, work it so you know those are the general settings that you can find in whatever in uh, all the brush more or less so we can be on the same page so now the first one is the brush size okay so as you can see uh, I have a 50 brush size now I'm increasing it to uh, let's make it 20 something like 200 something so as you can see now 
I have a bigger brush. Okay, brush size is how much big is your brush? Pretty easy. Now, the second option is related to color mixing. Okay, color mixing have two options. You have blend, that is the default one, uh, and you have smear, one of the most recent one. So, Blend have amount of paint, density of paint, and color stretch. I will use that to just show what I mean. So, uh, because you have all the option with blend, so I can show you amount of paint, density of paint, color stretch. Now, amount of paint is, uh, is really easy, amount of paint, because I just put a red here. Now I select a blue and as you can see here, I am blending inside the red. Amount of paint uh, is an option that lets you choose how much you want to blend when you are painting over a uh, color. So for example, if I go to amount of paint and I just go practically zero, as you can see, I will practically have a very soft, practically you are not even seeing it blend, okay? But if I go to 100, as you can see, it will practically not blend. Now, density of paint is really, really easy to understand because it's practically the amount of paint on the uh, on a transparent background okay so here i have density of paint zero and as you can see i'm not painting anything at all okay but if i go with uh, an already existing color as you can see i will paint something So if I go to density of paint 100, as you can see, I will paint something. Now color stretch is a little bit less uh, obvious. Uh, you need a little bit more time to understand it properly, but it's very, very easy. So if I put uh, density of paint, uh, this is just for me, don't worry, if I put color stretch at zero as you can see the color just finish like immediately okay but if i go to color stretch 100 at the maximum i can go practically through infinity okay so what does it mean in a nutshell for example i just create a little blob of color i just decrease the amount of paint and the density of paint so i have practically a blender okay so if i go with color stretch 100 i just can practically mix i can practically blend through infinity whatever whenever wherever i want but if I go color stretch practically zero, I can only blend near the color, okay? So this is it. Color mixing have amount of paint, density of paint, and color stretch. Amount of paint is, just to recap, is how much color you put over another color. Density of paint is how much color you put on a transparent part of your canvas. Color stretch is how much, well, your color will stretch when you try to blend it. Watercolor edge is a pretty easy one, okay? Like, as you can see, I have this little border outside my brush stroke. So if I remove it, I don't have any more that border. Okay, so if I put, for example, watercolor edge at, I don't know, 20 pixel, 
practically speaking, it will be all my brush stroke, okay? So you can just remove it, put it based on your preference, okay? Nothing fancy, okay? And I, I will be honest here. So those are the basic options, the general settings you will have in all my brushes. Okay, this will be the last introduction video because one of my beta testers said that uh, pen pressure wasn't how he liked it. So yeah, uh, here's how to change pen pressure. Okay, now I'm using the watercolor glazing soft tree. Okay, and as you can see, it gives you this really soft feeling. But maybe you have a different pen pressure curve. Your hardware doesn't have uh, much pressure point, uh, uh, you know. So how to change it? It's very, very easy. For an example, uh, here, the amount of paint, every single parameter here that have this little square or this little arrow, you can click on it and it will open the brush dynamics window. Okay, so for example, here I activated my pen pressure. Okay, and now this curve will uh, change how clips you paint will react to your pressure. So let's go here to the amount of paint. And for example, let's go to directly amount of paint 100. So you can see a little bit more. Uh, Let's go density, let's go density of paint uh, 100 so you can see a little bit better how this works. So I have here pen pressure, a uh, pretty standard pen pressure curve. I just put it a little bit as a valley. And as you can see, I have a very, very uh, soft gradient in my pen pressure. Okay. So, but if I do the invert, I create this little bit of a belly, I will have a less, uh, uh, I will have a harder curve with my pressure, okay? And if you just want to remove it altogether, just uncheck the pen pressure check. So that's it. Uh, the pressure uh, will not change anything at all. I will just, uh, you know, reset it a little bit. So it's like before. Okay, so here's the first method to change uh, uh, pen pressure with all the brushes. Okay, this works with everything. Okay, like uh, uh, the trend edition, the whatever. Okay, if you see this arrow and t and that little this little square, you can just click on it and you activate the dynamics for the pen. Okay, that's it. It works with everything. The second method is a little bit more uh, elaborate. We can say it's a little bit more inside the option of clips you paint and you go to file you go to pen pressure settings okay and you just do some sketch here and clips you paint will record your pen pressure here and you will create a graph accordingly so after doing this you just need to click check adjust the setting you just need to make some line here to see if you feel comfortable with it. And if you don't like it, you can go a little bit stronger in which you will need more, uh, you will need less pressure to increase the size, opacity or whatever. If you go lighter, you will need less pressure to have the variation. Uh, usually this is good for me and we are done okay those are the two ways to change pressure okay so just personalize 
however you want this brush set so just have fun with my brushes that's all i ask <laughs> so this is the last introduction video if you want to know other things uh, on how to use eclipse to paint just ask away or if you want other tutorials i don't have any problem in doing them Okay, before going to the meat of the video, I want to show you a very cool feature that I've added to the brushes, uh, to this brush set. So, if you select any kind of the watercolor uh, LB brush set, just go to right click on the brush, subtool settings, and if you click on background color of icon, you can select whatever color you want and that brush will have this little colored icon okay in the tool window in the tool palette okay and the most uh, and the cooler thing okay is that erasers and blenders have three different color uh, location okay the blender have uh, at the bottom the color uh, the eraser on the right and the brushes have a little bit of a triangle in the top right and look it's really cool okay because with these you can have a quick color variation and you know in the tool bar which first which uh, brush you are using and if you want to just like have a visual aid to know that you have selected your favorite brush in the brush set you can do it easily it's sorry it's just cool okay it's just cool i hope this uh, will be useful to you so now let's just go to the meat of the video and i just want to show you all the cool brushes that you will get by buying this brush set <laughs> 